just to start off with, we'll talk about the good things on the buy side and the selling side. On the buy side, um, all of the, the economic indicators, all the pieces that we look for to make it uh, a strong buyer's market are still there. Uh, incomes are increasing, although maybe not as much as we'd like. They're still going up in the right direction, so is employment. Interest rates are stable. They're expected to rise a little bit, but incomes are as well, so we hope that most likely that'll be a, an offset for it. Uh, inventories are rising in most areas and most price ranges, particularly the more the upper end, but that's giving buyers uh, more choice, finally. They've been looking for that for a long time. Um, and uh, in general, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a good overall opportunity for buyers. Uh, on the selling side, uh, the same, this is actually kind of an unusual market and has been for a couple of years where it's been both a good market for sellers and buyers. Uh, values are rising. Now that's, um, that's good for buyers and sellers. It's creating equity. And, and two-thirds of, of sellers are also buyers as well. So it's creating that equity and creating that jump in the market. So, so increases, value increases are great for sellers. The fact that interest rates are stable, keeping buyer interest there. Uh, looking at buyer interest for the last few months, and really the trend's gone throughout the year, we're still seeing web activity. So people online looking at houses still rising. We're seeing uh, showing appointments still very strong, and there's that seasonal adjustment. So this time of year, it's a little bit slower, but compared to last year and last December and November and, and even October, we're still seeing good activity there. So buyers are out there. In fact, there are probably as many buyers in the market now as, uh, as there were last year. In, in uh, November activity, our pending sales, those new contracts that were written in November, actually were up rather dramatically across all price ranges and most all markets, which was very interesting. We think it probably was weather related to a certain degree, which means that if it is weather related, it's probably borrowing a little bit of transactions from, the, from going forward. But October slowed a little bit, and we think that was because we borrowed transactions in September and in August because of the talk about interest rate rises. So, so there's that flow of economic conversation going on that's causing buyers and sellers to move a little bit uh, maybe not as naturally as they would normally for the seasonality of the market. But uh, all in all, uh, even though you might be moving the pile a little bit between uh, months, it's still very good activity and a very good um, prospects going into the winter. Um, going, if you look at this winter versus last, we'll have a little higher inventory with about as much buyer and seller, act, or buyer activity, excuse me. Uh, that's a good healthy market. As we said in the prior months, for particularly the upper end price ranges, it's going to feel a little bit slower for sellers because, um, because there are more listings. Even though there are more buyers, if there are more listings than buyers growing, then it's going to feel slower. Uh, and probably prices will not be rising as fast. So as we said last month, you probably can expect inventories to be, for the most part, slightly overpriced going into the winter. So, um, so sellers have to sort of reset their expectations. Not a major reset, dramatic reset, but just reset what they expect to see and happen and the values they expect to get. Um, we think that this rise in inventory that we're seeing is not a long-term trend that will cause values to decline or flatten in the long term. It's just part of the recovery. It's part of uh, the fact that uh, sellers are finally seeing equity and they're finally moving and doing the things they've been waiting to do for a number of years. So as I said before, two-thirds of those sellers are buyers, so they will absorb their own inventory for the most part once they get going. So that's the overall trend, specifically for Washtenaw County. Now Washtenaw has outperformed the rest of Southeast Michigan throughout the year continues to do that. So if you look, if you look at the market activity, um, it follows the same trends in that the under $250,000 market is still tight in inventory, um, still sales are strong, month supply of inventory is under two months. So those are still the market where, where buyers and sellers are, or buyers particularly are fighting for listings and can't find the properties they're looking for. If you look specifically in the city of Ann Arbor, it's very tight and continues to be that way. The two fifty dollars to $500,000 price range in Washtenaw County is selling a little bit more. Again, the inventory is still tight. Uh, inventory was up uh, last two months, about 15%, so it was giving a little bit of relief of inventory there. But still, um, we're about two months supply of inventory in that price range, so it's still pretty tight. Again, the tightness and that uh, lack of inventory is still concentrated in the city itself. The further out that you get, uh, it isn't quite as bad, but still very, uh, uh, very tight there. And values, of course, then are going up um, as well. 
not up quite as much. If you follow Case Shiller numbers, you'll see that those numbers are going from this time last year, year over year changes of 10 or 12 percent. Now they're down to 4 or 5 percent, and even Washtenaw were holding that as well. So it's a reasonable percentage increase. The half million above market inventories have risen quite a bit there. Sales are also reasonably strong there. The pending sales have jumped quite a bit across all price ranges for Washtenaw County uh, this past month and in October as well. So that tells us there still is pent up buyer demand out there. And also, uh, at least for the upper end, more listing inventory. The month supply of inventory for the half million and above is, um, is about six months. So uh, that activity is uh, still neutral market. It hasn't quite moved to seller's market, but it seems to be leaning that way. One of the unique things that, that we looked at, we broke down the price ranges and went into some, some more detail of the analytics, is we looked at the activity by the, the amount of time on market. Most of the activity, most of the transactions, no matter what price range, are happening on, on homes that have been on the market less than 90 days. 80% plus transactions are for homes that have been on the market less than 90 days. But if you break that up into other segments, like how many homes selling in 10 days, uh, 10 to 30, 30 to 60, and 60 to 90, et cetera, you find that across all price ranges, there, if we, and we, we did this by um, how many buyers per listing. And across all price ranges, in those listings that have been on the, home, on the market 10 days or less, there's about one buyer for every two listings. That's, so it's a pretty tight market. Pretty, there's a lot of buyers out there. And, and that's why there's so much activity when homes first hit the market. If you go from 10 days to 30 day activity, there's about one, uh, one buyer for every four listings. So you can see as the, as the days go on, your activity is going to settle quite a bit. Um, and as you go from 30 to 90 days, about one for every five listings in the lower price range, one buyer for every 10 to 15 listings in the upper price ranges. Now when you go to the over 90 day category, that's where you see the split dramatically, particularly in the upper end. In the upper end, over 90, you've got one buyer for every 50 plus listings in the marketplace, whereas in the under 250, it's one buyer for every 15 listings. So that's why you'll find, um, depending on how long the home is on the market, those homes in the market for a while, those sellers are going to say, what hot market? Not much is going on, particularly in the upper end markets um, where you see a dramatic change. But on the other hand, it's as likely that a $400,000 home or an $800,000 home or a $70,000 home will sell in a heartbeat in the first 10 days of their price rate. So it, it, it's a, there's an equalized. The first 10 to 30 days in the market is very equal no matter what price range, but after that, it slows down dramatically in the upper price ranges. So Washtenaw County, good activity. Still the stro probably the strongest county in the market, maybe next to Kent County and uh, uh, Grand Rapids area, but uh, still all good economic activities.